Hi everyone, welcome to this short video about apprenticeships. Um, I'm basically going to run through what an apprenticeship is, the pros and cons of doing them, and how your son or daughter can go about finding all those fantastic apprenticeship opportunities out there. So what is an apprenticeship? Apprenticeship is basically work-based learning. So what that means is your son or daughter will be working in a job, but also they'll be going to college to gain a qualification. So the pros of this obviously are that your son or daughter can be earning a wage whilst also gaining qualification. Apprenticeships in general can last anywhere between one year and I've seen some last as long as seven years. The average and the ones that we're going to be looking at are around about four years. Again, I'll be running through the pros and cons a little bit later on, but I just want to talk very quickly about what we do at Fitz Wild Arts as assist students. The UCAS process, if you've watched the video there, is very much teacher led um, and we give a lot of information from the school. The apprenticeship, a lot of the onus is on the student. Now, we rely on you and the student to try and find the apprenticeships, but we can do a lot to try and support the student get those apprenticeships. So we work on cover letters, we do CV writing. We actually hold um, an interview skills workshop where we have lots of external people coming in, um, professionals from the recruitment industry, and they interview your students and basically give them some feedback about how they can improve. Obviously, that's something that we're looking to do next year, depending on what happens going forward. Now, whilst I'm on that note, apprenticeships have obviously been affected by COVID-19. Um, this new support from the 30th of April was talking about the number of apprenticeship starts plummeting. Um, like the UCAS process, we have no idea what is going to happen with this. What I will say is that on the same day that I was reading this news story, I'm still getting emails coming through from various apprenticeship providers telling me um, as a teacher to remind my students to apply for these placements. So although the number of placements may have decreased, they're still certainly out there. When you're searching for apprenticeships, it can be a bit of a minefield because there are so many different types. Now, when we talk about types of apprenticeship, what we're talking about is the level. So there are level two all the way through to level seven. Now, to make it easier for you, I would focus my attention on levels four, five and six, potentially level three as well. There are really good placements for level three. Intermediate, I would completely discount. That is the equivalent of GCCs and your son or daughter would have done those a long time ago um, so what you want to be focusing on is level three and above with the sort of holy grail being the level six degree apprenticeships degree apprenticeships are fantastic they're an apprenticeship that at the end of it upon completion you will also achieve a degree now if you go to university you'll take out uh, a loan for your accommodation and living you'll pay nine thousand pound plus for your tuition fees so you get your degree, but also you're saddled with that debt. With a degree apprenticeship, you work and learn at the same time. Now, when you work, you get experience and you get paid a salary. But at the end of it, what you've been working towards in terms of the learning, the college based side of things, you will achieve a degree or the equivalent of a degree. So you earn money, you gain experience and you get a degree at the end of it. They're very high in demand and they're very, very tough and hard work. So you'll be expected to complete about 40 hours a week, but also 10 hours of studying on top of that. Now, they have been rare in the past degree apprenticeships. There's something that's becoming more and more popular, and there's some links there. I'm gonna take you through how I would search for a degree apprenticeship should I be looking. Um, some of the companies on the right hand side there are, are ones that have really started to sort of adopt this process. So Barclays, Ford, Goldman Sachs, um, TFL is a really, really popular one um, with our students applying there. And we have had success, especially with the financial firms like KPMG, Deloitte, Mazars. Um, we've had students also get into degree apprenticeships, uh, places like the Royal Mail with project management. So they are out there they can just be tricky to find. So where can you look to find them? The first place you should be looking is the government website. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking to you about how you should use that as a tool. You can find places on the UCAS website as well. So although UCAS is primarily used for finding university courses, there are apprenticeships um, listed on there as well. And sometimes you will find information listed on individual university websites. I would start off with the government website. Um, I'd also look at directly at employers. So Mrs. Smell, 
will send out a lot of information to students about uh, apprenticeships when they come out. Students will get the opportunity to sign up to sort of newsletters about specific industries. So if a student is particularly interested in engineering and one of the sixth form team comes across that, we will email that across. But it's important to be really proactive and look at the company's websites. So especially the bigger companies, most of the big companies out there now, they offer um, degree apprenticeships. One of the things I would really recommend is signing up to as many newsletters as possible. So if you go to Google and type in uh, apprenticeships or apprenticeship vacancies or school leaver vacancies, anything like that, you'll get a whole list of different companies who basically do the searching for you. And then they will email you with lots of different um, advertisements and vacancies of things that meet your criteria. So one of the ones that I particularly like is this one I can, you can see on your screen now. This is called All About School Leavers. So if you just type that into Google, you'll find that. I would advise signing up to them as a newsletter and you can select the sort of industries that you're interested in and they will sort of spam your inbox with as many things as possible. Um, there's another one here, not going to uni. There are hundreds out there. Now, they will email you a lot and it's really, really important that you don't just get into the habit of just deleting them because a lot of the time, the things they send you might not be useful, but when they do send you that useful one, it's really, really important that you are checking it. So my advice would be to sign up to as many of those as possible. So how do you apply for apprenticeships? Well, once you've found the perfect vacancy, you need to make sure you meet the entry criteria. You need to have been a student in England and resided there for the last three years, and you need to make sure that you have the grades or on course for the grades that they require for this role. When you're actually applying, generally speaking, you're going to be applying directly with the company who the vacancy is with. So they will give you information on deadlines. They will give you information on what you need to do to apply. We can help you with that if there's information that they require or if they're asking specific questions that you can't answer, then you can come and ask us for any sort of advice. Generally speaking, most apprenticeships for the September, for the summer starts that you'll be looking for, go on about January and February. A lot of the larger companies have rolling intakes. So they'll take a batch of students in October. They'll then take another batch of students in January, another batch in March and so on. But they'll all be for the following August or September placements. So it's worth keeping your eye almost straight away as soon as we start year 13. The earlier the application goes in, the better you're gonna to seem to them as the employer. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the government website. If you was to look for vacancies, if you was to type in UK government apprenticeship search into Google, this would be what comes up. Now, the first thing I want you to notice that I've done here is I've left the keyword search blank. Now, if you was looking for a degree apprenticeship in engineering, for example, you might be tempted to write the word engineering in the keyword search. What we found in the past is that filters out a lot of things. And it might just be because the word engineering isn't in the title that they filter out an apprenticeship that might have been actually really, really good for you. So my advice would be to leave that keyword search blank. Um, just underneath that, you can see I've put the, the location as the school's postcode and I've put the distance as 40 miles. If you put it as 30 miles, that won't include most of the opportunities in London. I know a lot of students who are looking at degree apprenticeships have got a vision about working in London. So make sure that you set that to 40 miles. You've then got the apprenticeship level underneath that. For the purpose of this, I've set that to degree level. Um, you can set it to lower. What I'd advise you to do is work through the degree option first, find all the best options for you, then put that down to advanced or higher and look through those. So do it one by one and just filter out the ones. It will take a bit of time to scroll through, but just going through each one and working out, is that right for me or is that not? So let's take a little closer look at this one here, this Amazon Automation Engineering Apprenticeship Programme. So the first thing that you'll probably notice about this role is its annual wage, £25,065. Your son or daughter could finish sick form, 18, 19 years old, and they could go out and earn that straight away, which is absolutely amazing. Now, don't get too excited, they're not all this good. I would say the average that I've seen doing these searches is anywhere between sort of 17, maybe 20,000 pounds. Um, and it's not just degree apprenticeships that pay that much. It's a lot of information based on here. You can see how far away it is from you. And there's a, a information about what the apprentice will be doing. Um, different apprentice vacancies will have different information, but they'll all generally speaking have uh, information about wage, working hours and um, 
time to completion and entry requirements. So you can see here that for this course, you need to have got at least two A-levels um, and realistically, they're looking for someone with mathematics, IT, physics, or some form of engineering course. And there's a few things there in terms of personal qualities that students can try and pick out in terms of cover letters and things like that. So this is a four year course with a really, really good wage, obviously a very reputable company, um, Amazon. Another one that um, I, I found here was the EY, so Ernst & Young, based in London. So this is a sort of financial role. Ernst & Young, another degree apprenticeship here. This one doesn't give information about salary, it just says competitive. Um, but again, it gives you the, the, the longer time period there, 54 months. This is actually, if you notice in the bottom left hand corner, a um, master's degree level. So this will take students not only through the degree, but also because the longer version, it will give them a master's equivalent as well. So just to show some balance here, this is not a degree apprenticeship. It's actually a higher apprenticeship. But the annual wage is still £21,000. A lot of students get real fixated on the idea of I want a degree apprenticeship. But actually, what they want is a good job, a good qualification and a good wage. And it's not just degree apprenticeships that do that. So it's really, really important to have a look, look around and don't just filter by degree apprenticeships. This one here is looking for um, three A levels, A start to C. So actually, in theory, they're actually asking for more of this company than the Amazon one that we looked at at the start. Your son or daughter's got a really big decision to make. Do they go to university? Do they go down the apprenticeship route? It's really, really important they consider the pros and cons of both before making that decision. Now, I think I've made the pros very, very clear about apprenticeships, the main one being about the financial outlay of the university. To get that degree, you have to spend a lot of money and you are saddled with a debt at the end of it. With the degree apprenticeship and other apprenticeships, you gain the qualification, but you haven't spent the money. The other thing there obviously being that you are paid a wage from the start. And we've just seen wages you know, up to 25,000 pounds as well. So not only do you get paid a wage, but you get the degree <coughs> for free. The other thing as well is that you get the experience alongside that. So someone finishing university could have a very good degree, but someone finishing a degree apprenticeship will have that degree, but also the three or four years of actually working in that industry, making them that bit more employable. The other thing to consider as well is that if you work well on your apprenticeship placement, there could be the possibility that they keep you on as a full-time employee. Now the pros are very obvious, but it's very important to consider the cons. The main one being that they are a lot harder to find. A business student who wants to study that at a university has a choice of 250 places at Essex, 250 places at Hertfordshire, 250 places at Kent. There are lots of places and they're almost guaranteed a place on a degree programme. The same student might want to do a degree apprenticeship at Deloitte's in the tax department, and there might be two of those. Now, I've read a report that says that for every one placement in apprenticeships, there are 17 applicants. I've not seen any figures for degree apprenticeships yet, but I would be very surprised if that figure is not a lot higher. They are very, very competitive and success rates are low. So it's very, very hard to get onto the exact program that you want to get onto. The other thing to consider is that they are student led. With the UCAS process, us as teachers at the sixth form, we can really monitor that. So we can see whether your son or daughter has done their personal statement. We can see whether they have paid the fee for it to be ready to send. We cannot do that with apprenticeships. So when we are talking about it being student led, the onus is very much on the students to find the vacancies, it is very much on them to apply, to respond to employers, to take the online tests and things like that. So it's very, very important that you have to be on top of them as well as us and they have to be motivated themselves to find those placements. Another disadvantage is the amount of work and study time. A lot of people think, OK, I'm doing four days a week here. I'm doing one day a week at college. But actually, it is hard work. As I mentioned earlier, it could be 40 hours of work a week and 10 hours of study. So they're going to want you to work really, really hard for that sort of free degree. The other thing as well is that, of course, you're missing out on that experience of university, that independence. However, given the, the current news at the moment about distance learning at university, maybe that's something not to consider. So to summarise, firstly, sign up to as many apprenticeship sites as possible. I mentioned earlier about going onto Google and typing in apprenticeship search or apprenticeship vacancies or school leave of vacancies. Go onto as many websites as possible and sign up to as many alerts or newsletters as possible. The more you sign up to, the more emails you will get, 
that might be bad, but it might be that in all those emails you find that one vacancy that is perfect for you. Talking about one vacancy, one of the things I really would advise you to do is keep an open mind. Your son or daughter might have a very specific job that they've got in mind at the moment. I would advise you to um, advise them to be a bit more open and to apply for a wide range of jobs. A lot of students have it in their mind that they definitely want to do this one thing. But when they start exploring that one thing, it turns out that it's not exactly what they thought. And it might be that they should have considered other things. So I would look at a, you know, a wide variety of different subjects, a wide variety of different positions within a field of um, desired roles. Um, the big one for me is not applying for just one job. A lot of students get hung up on one position. We had a student last year who um, found the perfect role for them. They applied for it. They got through the first stage. Apprenticeships, generally speaking, will have many stages to them, four or five stages, perhaps. Um, the student got through the first stage and stopped applying for anything else. It wasn't until March, April that he found out they did not get through to the next stage. And then he had nothing going at that point. So we always advise students to be applying for a lot more than one. I would advise eight, nine, ten different vacancies at a time. If you get one confirmed and you are offered a place, then it's very, very easy to email all the other companies and say thank you, but no thank you. So really, really important that you advise your son or daughter to be applying for multiple roles. And the final thing, as I mentioned, is that we can't keep on top of students as much as we would like. With UCAS, we can really see and track what students have done and we can monitor where they are. With apprenticeships, it sort of is down to you. We wish there was a program that we could invent that would um, track it in exactly the same way as UCAS, but it just doesn't exist. So we need you, we need the student to be really, really proactive in searching for as much information as possible and to find those vacancies and then applying for them. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to email through to the SIG form. Thank you very much for listening. See you later. Bye.